My name is Sue Bagshaw. I work as a medical doctor with young people mostly. I spend a lot of time with young people, um, which means that I've learnt a lot. Parents have a responsibility to keep their young people safe, but that doesn't mean ignorant. Um, and I think we've got this confusion that knowledge means the end of innocence, um, but actually it's ignorance which gives you the end of innocence. And if we can actually help our young people to have knowledge of all the things that are going on, they're much less likely to act on it. It's really interesting that I've been involved in discussions around when you should start sex education. In my view, you should start it at kindergarten because it's part of life and you do it age appropriately. But then there's no surprises as they get older and there's no yearning to find out this sort of adult secret. Um, it's just part of life which they observe whether we like it or not. So I think my parents shouldn't be worried if they've had that kind of um, care around their child that they'll make sure that their child knows about things that go on. Um, the other thing I think parents should worry about though is if they find that their young people are not being critical about what they're seeing. So teaching them to be critical of what they say, see and hear is very important. And that's hard for a lot of adults because they don't, they've never been taught to do that themselves. So I think it's around all of us as parents and grandparents learning how to evaluate what we hear and see, whether it be pornography or whether it be politicians on the television. Unfortunately, a fair bit of pornography isn't about the sex, it's much more about the power. Um, and I think that's what we need to be worried about. What are the values that young people are picking up when they're watching stuff like this? And I think that's, that's the, the thing to worry about. And so therefore, how to counteract it is not to say don't watch pornography. The most important thing is to say, what are your values? What do you think the values of what you're watching are? How are you going to be different rather than do you think you might mimic it? When parents are frightened and fearing, the young person picks up on that fear and then they go, oh, maybe I should be frightened of it. And, and that's not going to be helpful because they're not going to be able to actually form their own values. I think the problem gets much bigger the more you don't talk about it. It's a bit like saying, you know, we better not let them get driving licenses because they might crash a car. So if we talk about it, and we make sure that people are aware that some stuff they need to critically evaluate for themselves, and evaluate means have your values and compare with what you're watching, then I think it's really important that we actually talk about it in that context. What do you think of what you've just seen? What, get them to talk about it in a much more, um, if you like, fearless way. younger people and when i say younger people i mean people before they get to puberty because we know that children are pretty concrete thinkers they're pretty literal if they see something they go that's what actually happened and they're not able to have a concept of they have a concept of imagination they live all sorts of imaginary stories um, but then they don't have the abstract thinking concept stuff and that ability to be able to think about thinking starts to develop after puberty. So many young people told us that actually this is where they get their sex education from. That means we failed them in our education system. And parents and grandparents and teachers and coaches, we need to be aware that young people are looking, they're thirsty and hungry for what sex is all about. Unfortunately, we live in a media world where sex is used to sell stuff. And it would be really good if people understood that sex is part of that whole bonding relationship, human being stuff. But what we really need to teach people is how to value it and how to make sure that they respect other people and themselves and the other people in a, in a really healthy way. And that's that teaching them about the whole brain development thing, protecting those where the brain hasn't quite developed yet in terms of making that meaning. We all get embarrassed talking about sex. Um, actually, believe it or not, young people get embarrassed talking about sex as well. Um, and, you know, actually even imagining your parents having sex, never mind your grandparents having sex, is really frightening. Um, 
but it's embarrassing for all of us. So the most important thing to start off when you're talking to your children, young people about sex, is actually acknowledge the embarrassment. Start off by saying, hey, this is embarrassing for all of us. Um, and some, some people don't find it embarrassing at all. That's great. Um, and then you can talk much more matter-of-factly as, a, as a, this is part of life. Um, but if you can pick up opportunities to talk about sex rather than the big talk, pick up opportunities like, you know, if you leave a tampon around, what's that for, mummy? If you leave some condoms around, what's that for, mummy? You know, when they're really quite little, you can give some age-appropriate information, but what you're doing is giving the message that you're okay to talk about this stuff. And you, you, you get embarrassed, but it's not that bad, and we can actually have a good conversation. You can't shock me, and, you know, I'd love you to keep talking. And I might learn something from what you're telling me. And I think if parents and teachers could have that kind of attitude, that's going to help young people enormously.